Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. It was a very timely one because we just launched our um, research and development center in Israel this year, earlier this year, together with Sheba Medical. So we, I'm living um, this bridge, uh, traveling numbers of times to, to Tel Aviv per year and kind of bridging the technology and the data abundance that we have in Israel with what we are doing in, out of Boston and out of Berlin. And today I want to talk to you about a very risky place, which is the operating room in a hospital. If you are going to, into surgery today, there's a risk between single digit percentage, so 5%, up to 30%, that you will have an encounter a problem, a complication after surgery. So um, that's a pretty high risk. And actually, 50% of this risk could or can be diminished through the use of technology. And to visualize the magnitude of this issue, uh, we have around 2 billion surgeries every year. So 2 billion people are undergoing surgeries every year on this planet. And that's, of course, a, a risk that we want to address and that we actually can address. And looking at, at other industries that have already addressed such a risk, we can look at commercial airline industry. So commercial airline industry is transporting also these 2 billion passengers, or 2 billion people per year. And actually, the risk of something going wrong is very low. We have about 100, 200, 300 deaths per year. We have very little harm that is happening to passengers. If I go into a plane, I can fall asleep. In surgery, it's dramatically different. We have four, or there are four million people that are dying post-surgically from complications, and there's hundreds of millions of people with complications and reoperations, etc., which is harmful for the patient, um, but is also extremely costly to the system. And that's why this area is a, of big interest in in healthcare, and we are using the same concepts that we have used in commercial airlines, so checklists, process automation, integrated systems, navigational systems, planning systems, that support the pilots to fly the plane safely in surgery. And it's not only about that, but it's also, in surgery there's not only a pilot, but actually um, there's a team. So. It's a team sport in a way. So there's a, there's a surgeon that is conducting the surgery and then there's a team around that has to work very well together in order to make the surgery a successful one. So actually, 50% of the outcome of the surgery is determined by the surgeon, the social technical skills of the surgeon, and the other 50% is determined by the team. So those are the kind of input variables, so to say, to the output of either successful surgery or not a successful surgery. So using the technologies that we are using in performance sports, um, where there's no, no performance athlete doesn't analyze the videos, no, no good team is not looking at how they can optimize the way they work together. Using that in surgery is something that we strongly believe in and that is actually gaining a lot of traction. Why do we do it? It's a massive market. I said it's two billion surgeries per year. It's about $1.5 trillion of hospital revenue. So it's a maximum kind of um, impact on the hospital profitability, revenue, etc. is coming from surgery. And AI is slated, and automation is slated to have a massive impact there financially and from the, um, from the efficiency perspective. So that's why we are investing in this and why we're focusing on it as a group and as care syntax. And I wanted to show you a few examples of how we went about it. And this is going back to the uh, initial comment, which was, you know, data is the oil of the 21st century. You need specific data to build the algorithms to support the surgeon. How do you actually get that data? Because it's not something that you can find anywhere easily. So what we did is, and what we have is, we have data sharing agreements in place with uh, Shiba Medical Center, with Inselspital, with a lot of leading university teaching level hospitals around the world. And they are providing us with a certain set of data that we can then use to develop the algorithms that support the surgeon before, during, and after the surgery. So an example here is with Shiba, what we're developing is we're developing a quantification of the risk 
for that specific patient pre-surgery and post-surgery. This is something that already exists in a way, but it's not really data-driven. So it's more the surgeon looks at the file, he makes up his mind based on his experience, and then he decides is it a high-risk or low-risk patient. After the surgery, it is not quantified at all. But we can help through me measuring certain, even just time span of the surgery. If it's a longer surgery, risk of the patient is going up because more infection risk, probably something went wrong if it, if it takes longer, etc., etc. So very easy to measure things that can drive the score. And if you combine that with knowledge about who the patient is, what is the history of the patient, what type of population it's from, you can really create a very powerful tool for the team in the hospital to improve the care of the patient. And another, another example is in that I also brought a little video, I hope you can stomach uh, this video because it's from a surgeon, surgery, um, where we are basically having little assistance for the surgeon. So the same that you have when you drive your car, I mean your car is also kind of a robot, so it's a similar concept that warn you when you shouldn't turn or warn you if there's not enough di distance and so on and fo so forth. So we, we are developing these algorithms to help guide the surgeon. And in this case, it's a... Um, wait, let me go back. Can you... Ah, yeah, it's working. So in this case, um, you're seeing here a standard surgical field, and this is a minimal invasive surgery, so most of the things are done camera-based. And you can see the surgeon operating with two instruments, and what we have here is a machine vision that basically detects the instruments, which are fairly, this is fairly easy to do with the standard machine vision tools. And what we can see is if the tip of the instrument is visible to the surgeon, because we have the same view as the surgeon, essentially. And if it's not visible, the surgeon shouldn't operate, obviously, because he can't see what he's doing. Yet in this case, and in hundreds of millions of cases every year, these are kind of the mistakes that are done, and this is a high risk to the patient because there might be a puncture, and there might be um, a puncture to a vessel or to a nerve that either could have been prevented or that triggers bleeding that then post-surgery leads to, to a higher risk factor. So these are, these are the things that we are working on um, and have developed already. And, and yeah, maybe a little bit more about the company. So we are established since seven years. Um, we, we started out of Boston, actually. We did kind of a roll-up in the industry. We bought a few companies that already had installed bases in surgery to get access to the data, to the, to the oils of the 21st century. And then we, we expanded that base. So now we have about 6,000 operating rooms with our technology inside. So that's 10 million surgeries per year more or less um, with different levels of technology, but more or less making it more efficient and safe and developing these algorithms to plug them into the existing infrastructure that we have already built up. And yeah, in terms of size, we are, um, yeah, we are over 150 people based out of Boston, Berlin and Tel Aviv. And what we are aiming to do this year and uh, the reason why I'm speaking here is because we are looking for two things. One of the things is we are raising a a financing round, a $100 million financing round, where we have, on the one hand, our strategic partners, ourselves, um, and we're looking for co-investors. And the other topic is partners and data sharing, sharing partners, so partners that can help us scale. We're working a lot with insurance, with medtech companies to help us bring the solution into the market. And we're also looking for more hospital partners to kind of plug into our ecosystem of data sharing agreements. Thank you very much.